So it was September 1st, 2007. Where were you? What were you doing? Tell you what, that's the day Appalachian State became known on the map. Winning at number five Michigan in the big house on that day, 34 to 32 in an upset. Totally changes the landscape of college football. And now we have Appalachian State that's actually in the Sun Belt as a result. Why does that matter? Because the Tennessee Titans, with the 93rd pick in the third round, took a running back from Appalachian State. So which one's more realistic? Did we get our guy to back up Derrick Henry for the years to come? All of that and a little bit of a surprise at the end. Coming up next. So this is our third player in three days. We talked about Wilson two days ago. Yesterday we broke down Fulton. And today we move on to Evans. So the draft and getting to know these guys, it's hard work. But you know what? You're worth it. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like button. Just shows you care. And then you know what? If you want to leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. Did the Titans get this pick right? Or did you feel like we should have went with a different backup running back? We'll have to see. But let's dive in. Let's break this guy down. Oh, this was fun. This was a blast to break down Evans. And I'll be honest with you, I had the most fun breaking down Evans so far. So let's get into it. So, Darrington Evans. Why should you be excited as a Titans fan for this guy? Well, 4-4-2-40 speed. Yes, not as fast as Chris Johnson, but come on, he's fast. Turn, I mean, that was just unbelievable. So we know he's had three return kicks in his career, but he gets mega amounts of yardage all the time, which is a good thing. So Daniel Jeremiah basically said before Evans was drafted that he technically could see him going in the third round. And there were teams that were super, super excited and fell in love with his speed and versatility. So here's the question. What are his weaknesses? What kept him out of the second round? What kept him and every other running back in this draft out of the first round? Well, let's look. First of all, Evans. He doesn't get a lot of his runs inside. Now, we're going to break down a few of his games against some very good quality opponents that he had on the schedule from Appalachian State. And you'll notice some things. I won't give it away just yet, but we'll definitely show that graphic on the screen here shortly basically the blitz pickup, right? Just like any small running back. I mean, Evans, a small guy. Um, he has a good technique blocking, but let's just be honest. You <laughs> you got a guy like Clowney, for example, which don't get me started on Clowney right now, but if you got Clowney coming off the edge, I mean, there's only so much the, the guy can do. So that was a knock on him, supposedly. Um, the guy just simply can't finish or doesn't finish runs very well. Again, you know, if you're going up against a big dude on defense, I mean, Chris Johnson was one of the best at being able to shield himself so he wouldn't take that direct hit and still pick up a lot of yards in the process. So I have faith that this guy can do that. And the other big knock on him is not being able to break tackles. But again, when you're 5'11 and you're roughly 200 pounds, like, I'm not, I'm not picking Evans in the third round and put him behind Derrick Henry and expect him to do what Derrick Henry does. All we need as a backup running back, which we didn't have in Deion Lewis, is someone to go out there and, number one, actually have a threat of running, which is great. So if he has quickness and he can at least get to the outside, I mean, if Henry's beating you up in the inside and you can get to the outside, I mean, that would be awesome. So I'm really excited about that. Catching the ball out of the backfield. Being able to take a pass and do something with it has got me excited. Now, for the games that I broke down, I didn't see a lot of that. Uh, the stats are going to back me up on that. But I'm not sure how much they asked him to do. I'm not sure how much they put on his plate to do that. The one thing I noticed about Appalachian State, they had many different people doing many different things. I mean, one game that I broke down, they had like four different quarterbacks play. 
So you get my point. There were a lot of running backs. There were a lot of people doing various things. Now, I feel like the third round is a typical round where J-Rob picks somebody from a smaller school, or at least not one of the main SEC Big Ten schools, and this is his round to do it. So if you go back, you got Jonu Smith. Um, how could I forget? Uh, Taewon Taylor, right? You had um, Kevin Byard. And I think when you look at those picks, you're not going to hit on every one, as we know with Taewon Taylor. Touchdown, you can say, was against Penn State. That's important because he wasn't just doing it against smaller competition. So when you break down the games, this is a little bit of what you get. I was pretty intrigued. So I went into these bigger games he had. So he played North Carolina, Penn State, South and South Carolina. Three receptions for five yards. Again, the rushing's great. He didn't really do anything in the receiving element. Now, I don't want a running back just to throw to them. We, we figured that out with Deion Lewis. That doesn't work very well. And then when we don't throw it to him anyways, that definitely doesn't work out. But for this guy, I just thought he would have kind of stood out a little bit more in that receiving element against better quality competition. We just broke down Darrington Evans. And I asked you in the beginning of this video, CBS gave him a B minus for a draft grade while Pro Football Focus basically rated him like 200 and something out of all the prospects. So he was ninth. He was the ninth running back taken. There were no first round running backs. And then a bunch went off the board in the second and then third round. Keep in mind the Titans picked towards the end of the third round. So the question I have for you is, where does he fit? Is he a stretch? Is he someone that J-Rob did fall in love with? Took him way too early? According to Daniel Jeremiah, there were a lot of NFL teams that were falling in love with this guy because of the speed and versatility. So a couple of quick things. Uh, number one, we did sign Jonathan Joseph for, from, the, from the Texans today, a 36-year-old cornerback who used to be pretty good. Um, I know we're bringing him in more for leadership. It reminds me of a Cam Wake deal. Um, I feel like Cam Wake came in with a little bit more upside just for the simple fact he had a pretty good year the year before. This guy may be coming in more of a, a leadership role. It's going to be great for guys like Fulton. So, you know what? Am I super excited about it? No. But do I hate it? No. So, I think it's going to be just fine. It's a one-year deal. And then the latest thing on Clowney is he's just maybe not going to sign until, like, training camp. As far as the show on Sunday, dropping another clue for you. I'm pretty excited about it. So, Sunday night, 9.30, Titan Upload Live. We are bringing, we're, we're doing something we've never done before. It's a guest we've obviously never had before. It's a guest that I've never been able to interview before. And I'm just super pumped to have them come on. Now, it's not going to be a news reporter. It's not gonna be someone affiliated with any types of news. Um, it's a player and he's coming on the show. Now, I'm not gonna tell you who the player is, but I will say that this player's new. This is a new player from the Tennessee Titans that will be on this show Sunday night. You will not want to miss it. So, till next time, tighten up.